My name is Lawood and I just jumped out the pool with Dirty Glove Bastard. Can't nobody say they ran it on me. Bitch, I'm right on feet. I'm making plays just like Odell Bell. Come hand right on her cheek. Get out the way. All right. We got Lil Wody jumping off the porch with us today. What up with y'all, man? Hey, tune in with me. What's going on with your game? Shit, man, I'm just turning up. For sure. How I feel to be here? Shit feel good, you feel? No cap. Feel blessed to be here. Nah, it's a pleasure to have you on the porch with us today, man. Appreciate that. So how does it feel being able to go from city to city to city, just chasing your dream? Shit. <laughs> It feel busy, it feel like you feel you constantly working, like every time I wake up, I got something to do. I got something to do. Every time I look up, I got something to do. I got something to do, I got something to do. I just be busy. But at the same time, it, it's helping me at the same time, so shit, it's all right. How does it ha feel to have that work ethic so young? Shit, I'm used to it, because I been had it when I was younger, you feel me? When I was younger, I always wanted to get some money, so shit, it just, <laughs> It just easy, and I was trained to do it since I was a young nigga. So now it just easier, cause I've been trained to do it. So now it just, you feel me? It just different, cause like, in my city, nigga up, nigga famous. I can't even go in my city for real. So now it just, it just different. It just different. No, I feel that. So how would you describe the people, the way of life, and the culture of Mobile, Alabama? Oh, that shit treacherous. Why oh, that shit treacherous? I go to the mall, boy. I'm talking about I got niggas staring. Niggas want to rob me. I don't, niggas I don't even know want to rob me. Niggas I been cool with switched up on me, want to rob me. <laughs> That's just how it is. Can't, I can't even can't go nowhere without security. So with that being said, I'm just living. Did you ever expect life to get to it like at this point? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you saying, these your homeboys, you ain't never expect them to really turn on you like that. Not for real. Like, I ain't never look at it like that. Like, I looked at it like, you feel me? Like, you feel me? We could come up together. But, like, right. as, but as I was going up, they would just stop. They would stop. They stopped talking to me. So, that being said, that, that's how I knew they were talking about me. You feel mm. me? So, that being said, I just knew I was going up. God give you, you feel me? You take away the people that ain't for you and replace you with new people. That's, that's how you know. Curse. That's how you know, you feel me? You going up. That's real. And I never expect this to happen. I ain't never think it's gonna be like this. I ain't never think, you feel me, gonna be like this, but now I see it what it is. That's real. Now that it's got to this point, how does your outlook change, you know what I'm saying, on the people you keep around you and not necessarily some of the people who came up with you? They look at me like a god, but I'm still that same person. They don't realize that I'm still that same person. Before I, you feel me, came up for real, I'm still that same person. That same person that I was three, two years ago. Just got a little, little name, just got a little bigger. That's all it is. Facts. How would you describe your childhood coming up? Shit, it was all right. Shit. I was a bully. I ain't gonna count. <laughs> I was a lad bully. I'm going like, my city, or uh, campground. That's what it called, campground. I used to run shit, take nigga bike, steal nigga bike. I used to just used to run shit, you feel? Cause I was so little. I had I had about six brothers. And we were just, just some bad ass little kid. But she half of that dead now, so she that shit changed. Cause like niggas on gunplay, it ain't no more here no more. So they catch your ass, they just shoot your ass. That's just what it is. Ain't no more fighting. So I just stay out the way. What was it like coming up with Six Brothers? Fun, real fun, but shit, it wasn't too fun for me. I was, I was little, I was little head, but I was about, I don't know about no taller than me right here. But I was, you feel me, doing something though. I was strong, but I was just, to them, they were always, you feel me, bullying my ass, because I was little head. But on the outside of the world, it was fun, because I could just do what I want to do. You feel me, I was really having my way. Now it's different, cause like I ain't really got too many people I can trust. The only people I had were my family, but half of them gone. At what point would you say you started to realize the streets of Mobile can get kind of ugly? When my brother died, when my lad brother, my oldest brother, sick to the third, fourth to the oldest brother died. Cause uh, 
And I seen that he died, I was like, damn. When my first, when my first brother died, you feel me, I was young. You know, you don't really take deaths that serious. You young, you don't really understand how it is. But when he passed away, I was like, damn. Bro, dead, you feel me? You just, everybody got to die, you feel me? I ain't really take it in. Then my older brother died, I was like, damn. This shit getting real, you feel me? This shit getting really real. So that would make me put my big boy shoes on and say, I got to get out there and make, make some of myself. You feel me? I ain't want to work for nobody else. I ain't want to do that because, like, I'm working for myself and making other people millions of dollars when I can make myself millions of dollars. That being said, so I found something that I was good at doing, and then I knew it was either basketball or music. Basketball didn't work out, so I tried music, and it started to move for me, so that's what I did. That's real. At what point would you say you decided to jump off the porch? I was about 12. My mama went to jail for like good goddamn three years. It was just me, it was just me, my sisters, my brothers, and my daddy, my grandma. And she, you feel me? It really wasn't that good because my mama, she was the, she was the, the hustler. So she, with that being said, my daddy, he was a hustler too, but she, he just paying the bills. She, he couldn't really do everything but that my mama did. My mama, she was a little, she, she gonna go get that shit. So with that being said, you feel me? It was different. So with that being said, like, I just really got down. That when I jumped off the porch, she went to jail. I realized, you feel me? Ain't nobody gonna do shit for you. So I just start doing shit on my own. What's some of the things you can say you've been through or seen since jumping off the porch at an early age? People who ain't your friend, people cross you out, shit. Bitches, bitches, bitches will fuck whoever got a name, you feel me? You feel me, you feel me, you feel me. I only met one, one real female so far, but that's my baby mama. So far, so far, so far. I ain't saying nobody around me yet, but I'm just saying so far. But you feel me? And life goes on, cause you can die today, about a couple months later, well this week, they all screaming, all right, pee, woo, 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 everybody crying, then a month later, I forgot about your ass. That being said, see, life goes on. So just keep moving. No, that's real. At what point would you say you started making music? <laughs> About two years ago when my brother died. Yeah, two years ago. That when I really start like, I been like, I been like the real, I could just, I could freestyle some shit, you feel me? But as I started, it was a different ball game. Cause like you can freestyle all day make a song all day, that shit ain't nothing. But if you don't know how to put it together, how you really know how to put it together, you ain't nothing. So I started about two years ago, uh, got to where I'm at, like it took me like, I did like music, but music development on my own. I was in the studio for like nine months straight, I ain't dropped nothing, I was just constantly making songs, I like, just listening to them, seeing how it is, and that's what made me get where I'm at now, today with my music. No, that's real. Like you saying, you was in the studio a lot then for nine months. A lot of people don't even got that type of discipline to work on their craft. So what was it like for you in there for them nine months? You know what I'm saying? Talk about the shit you went through, the creative process, all that. Cause that shit wasn't easy. It was fun. It was fun at the same time. It was, I ain't gonna say it was hard. Cause like I was learning, I was learning so much. Cause I was around a person who knew how to rap and listening to him and how he come up. I'm like, oh, all right, this is how you do that. So boom. I'm gonna shout him out. His name is Chris Acall. Chris Acall. I'm gonna shout him out. Give him a prop. Because he did show me a little of the ropes of rap. So when I was just with him, you feel me? I found my own way. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Because I knew what I wanted to talk about. I, I don't want to listen. I don't really like to talk about too much violence. I like to talk about, you feel me, what I see in the street. Uh, what I did in my past life and shit like that. But uh, other than that, it was, it, was, it, was, it was fun, easy. What motivated you to start initially? When my brother passed away, cause I feel like you feel me, uh, I wanted to do something, do something big. I already, I already knew in my heart, you feel me, when I was younger, I'm gonna be something big, I'm gonna be something big. You feel me, I'm gonna, be, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do something real big, I just don't know what it is. So, you feel me, God, he'll push you to your, to what you, what you feel me, what your true calling is, and you just gotta see it. So, I feel like it's music. Cause 
feel me? This, this is what I've been doing. You feel me? It's been going good, so evidently it's gotta be this what it gotta be what it is. So with that being said, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. No, for sure. Who would you list as some of your musical influences? Okay, I go out of uh, I got three on. I start off one for no cap. I seen no cap start from the bottom. Worked their way to the top, no cap. When he first started, he couldn't rap at all. And I seen that, like, at first I was like, how far would listen to this music? And I, and I, I seen him got built, I was like, okay, now he doing something. Then as he really going to the top, I was like, all right. He, he really hard. Then the Papa, he went on, like the Papa music, he motivated me, because I seen him start from the top, from the bottom. Then my homeboy, j -Dot back here, I seen him start from the bottom to the top. So that just let me know right there, ain't shit, ain't shit just gonna come easy. You gonna have to really work and grind and get this shit. So that being said, they're my three motivators that I know that, you feel me, made me keep going. What about those three individuals you can say you were took initially, like you studied about them, like okay, J-Dot did this, my partner did this, you know what I mean? Like what about them inspired you? Okay, I say, uh, I start with no cap. I say no cap, you feel me? He uh talk about his pain, you feel me? Talk about, you feel me, what he been through. Shit that he been through. The papa, he do the same, talk about what he been through. Jedi, he do the same, talk, you feel me? Talk about what he been through. And it just, in different ways though. Everybody got their own different type of flow of what they been through and what they been doing. You feel me? They got their own type of flow. So with that being said, you just gotta say it in a different way. No, I feel that. So what would you say is the overall message in your music? What do you want the people to know from you? See, hard out there. Like, this, this is a real jungle. Like, don't nobody, everybody wake up every day thinking life a fucking game. It's not a game. I swear to God, it's not a game. You can lose your life just like that. Just like that. Like you can live, I could be talking to you right now and walk out the door and just get killed right now. Like life is not a game. It's not a fucking game. So with that being said, keep keep your head on. You feel me? I like to talk about like real life shit. Like bitches will set you up, niggas will set you up. Niggas will claim to be your home, but they don't really fuck with you, you feel me? So I just you just gotta keep your head up, man. Keep your eyes open, like keep your third eye open because you don't keep that open, niggas will run shit right up under your nose. You won't even realize Cause you just gotta just keep your eyes open. What do you feel like brings the best out of you and your music? What bring the best out of me and my music? When I get into like a, a simple argument, I get into like a simple argument with one of my female, it could be a friend, family member, and it'd be something simple. Something somebody been wanting to say to you, but like, they waiting for a moment to say it. They said it when they got into an argument with you. Now you like, damn, that how you feel? That shit'll put you in a, another state of mind, cause you're like, damn, that how you felt the whole time, the whole time yesterday, we was just cool as fuck, but that's how you felt though. So that being said, that, that'll make me go in the studio and just put my heart on the track type shit. And I can just easily do that, cause like, I be in my feelings, I be in my feelings a lot. That's real. What would you say is the biggest risk you took for yourself and your career? Biggest risk, the biggest risk, the biggest risk. The biggest risk I took. The biggest risk I took, oh. Fuck. Damn. I think the biggest risk I took was like. I think I spent like, I spent like $10,000 on a manager. Didn't know if it was gonna work out or not. And that was the biggest risk I took. I spent like 10, 10 racks on the mountain. He dicked me though, I give him that. <laughs> he dicked me though, but as he was digging me, I was paying attention to what he was doing though. And my mama was paying attention to what he was doing. I got two other mountains that were paying attention to what he was doing. And we learned from that. The little shit he did was telling us and we went from that and took it around with it. So I said that's a risk because we didn't, we didn't know the ropes at first. But now we know how it go. So with that being said, I said that's my risk. That's a risk. 
how hard was it for you to keep the faith in knowing, okay, if I spend this money on such and such managing me, it's gonna work. Even though, like you saying, it could not have, but you had the faith that it was gonna work either way. See, I ain't gonna cap. I was just so eager to do some shit. You feel me? I was so eager to rap just to do some shit. My whole time, didn't even know the steps it was to get to where I was at now. So if I look at myself from back then, I would've told myself, don't not do that shit. Do not do that shit. Cause the whole time, I needed to work on myself. That's what it was the whole time. I was rushing. So I was rushing for real, for real. So, but at the same time, it was just a lesson learned. Everything happened for a reason. So that was a, little, a big lesson learned and it was a risk because $10,000 is a lot, you feel me, for somebody who ain't really have it then. So $10,000 was a lot, but it showed me, you feel me, the ropes of everything. So yeah, I needed that lesson, for real. How would you describe the music scene back at home in Mobile right now? To my right now as we speak, for me, Oh, that be going good, popping. Going real well. Trending topic. <laughs> <laughs> you ask a nigga right now, Mobile, about Lil' Wooden, you gonna say that nigga, that nigga name on every, that nigga name everyone, everywhere on Mobile. It just, I never think it'll be like that. It's just crazy, cause like, Mobile is a hang ass city. You got some folks that love you, you got some folks that hate you. You got folks that wanna shoot your ass, you got folks that wanna, kiss on you when they see you. It, it just love, hate type situation. And like, I don't wanna move, but I, I wanna move. Cause like, I can't really go nowhere without my security guard. Like, like that shit get kinda exhausting. Like, bro, like, why the fuck I gotta have my security just going to Walmart? Just going to Walmart? I can't go to Walmart just buy me some chips and just come up out of that? You can't do that. So with that being said, I just, it's overwhelming. I ain't think it's gonna be like that. But it is. What's one of the changes you want to see happen in your city? The hate. I want the hate gone. Fast. Period. You feel me? But I know that ain't gonna, you feel me? That's just life. People gonna hate regardless because you just doing a little, a little more than them. You could be, because I'm younger, I'm younger than half of everybody in Mobile and I'm doing more than what they doing. So that's just like, that's just hate, that's just hate right there. Or they female like what I'm doing, you know, bring it to them, and they'll hate, they'll hate me off that. It's just a lot of shit that be going on. No, nah, for real. How did it feel to find a link with one of your inspirations for the song Green Goblin, Lil' Papa? Oh, that shit was hard. Like, like I ain't really look at it like, oh my God, Lil', it's Lil' Papa. I looked at it like, you feel me? I came a little, a long way. Came a long way because like, I was just like, damn, you feel me? to that nigga then and I, I'm with the nigga. So it's like, I came a long way. So with that being said, you feel me? I just look, I really actually took that as a lesson. Cause like, he, 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 he been global. So he global, so that being said, you can learn off somebody who been global and learn out what they did and what they doing. I looked at, took that as a lesson. Same thing as him, I took that as a lesson. Cause like, he been global, so that's a lesson for me too. Being oh, around somebody real. who been global, that's a lesson. Like, I like to hang around people who got more than me. Cause I can, you feel me? I can, I can learn off that. I ain't gotta worry about him trying to snake me. Cause get what, he got more than me, you feel me? So with that being said, I ain't gotta worry about them snaking me. I like hanging around with people who got more than me. You hang around somebody who got lower than you, that's where the bad vibes and energy come from. Cause they don't wanna snake you and take you for what you got. So with that being said, you feel me? I took that as a lesson. That's real. How did it feel to link with spinning bins for raindrops? Perfect. That shit was hard. That shit was hard. Yeah. yeah. That was hard. Cause like, it really posted up in La Papa. Did a song with La Papa, but he came with spinning Band and uh, Jedi. And I was like, damn. Why I got them hard here, I might well just go ahead and pay for the, you feel me? And we built the connection from all that. So that man said, you feel me? It was just probably some shit that was meant to be. That's real. Oftentimes we hear about people buying features and shit like that, and they talk about, oh, such and such was sad, or such and such was still, but you actually took the opportunity and built real relationships with these people, and you still in contact with them today. Yeah. Talk about, again, keeping that faith, knowing like, shit, this shit gonna pay off. 
Yeah, I feel like he's gonna pay off. You feel me? Cause she, I ain't think I was gonna be where I'm at the day clock. Like before the year started, I was like, you feel me? My mama gonna pop with this shit one day. I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna pop with this shit. When I tell tell everybody I'm gonna pop with this shit one day, I'm gonna pop with this shit one day, I'm gonna pop with this shit. And they're like, yeah, you gonna blow you? But they ain't had the same faith that I had in myself. I know they didn't, cause like, you know, you just be doing some every day. You just be like, you just see that person doing something, you be like, Man, I don't know what these niggas doing. You feel me? But you got a little faith. You just got a little faith, but you ain't got the same faith that he got in himself. Then when it really happened, not everybody all up on you. Like, oh, I knew that was going to happen for you. I knew that was going to happen for you. That, that's how that shit is. Like, a lot of people. Oh, I knew that shit was going to happen for you. I'm proud of you. That shit fake. I knew for myself, you feel me? I could see, I could see the vision. Everything I speak, everything I spoke. As I said, I want it, I got to this day. Everything. Now I'm speaking new wishes that I want. Which is what? I want to be on BT Awards. I want to feel me. I ain't go global yet. I went local. I'm local right now. So I ain't go global. That my BT and global. That's what I want. That's my next two goals. And I'm reaching for them. No, that's real. What about that single you just put out with uh, Sally Sosa, Pop Out? That whole moving, it's moving. Shout out to Sally Sosa, she hard. <laughs> that whole moving though. What's all about the inspiration behind the single, how it came together and everything? I see you got your support system on, go. <laughs> Boy, they lip syncing the fuck out of everything. Every song I name, they is right there mouthing the fuck out of that shit. Uh, you said the inspiration. Yeah, it's going, it's going good. It's going good. It's going good. Inspiration going good. I love it. It just, I got to keep my head on, 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 the, on the main mission. Don't get sidetracked. You feel me? Some people, because I know some people in the city right now, been rapping longer than way. Ooh. <laughs> it hurt their soul. Been rapping way longer than me. I just, come here, on the top of them. That being said, I know why they, where they at now. They been bullshitting, like the little, the little fame they did had, hey, they, they, they go turn to that instead of just keep working and keep going, trying to go to the top. They steady trying to, they steady, you feel me, trying to have too much fun. I'm steady working, like, while my name's still ringing right now, I'm steady working. I'm steady working, like, I can care two shits about the fame, cause I don't care. Long in my pocket, you feel me, going up, that's all I care about. I don't care about no fame. Cause now how I feel about the fame, I don't want it. I'd rather take the money than the fame. Cause you got wish you watch your people. I don't want that around. Nah, for real. Money more important. Money more important. Nah, for sure. Money more important. So talk about the upcoming project. Man, I'm dropping. Money more important. Coming soon. Uh, that project right there, it, it, it gonna be hard. Cause like, I put so much blood, sweat, and tears into the song, into every each song. It gonna be hard. Cause like. Like, as I was in my music music development, <laughs> I was goddamn, you feel me, making each song hard, bar for bar, bar for bar, bar for bar, put real sweet blood and twists into these songs, so I hope it do what it's supposed to do. It's gonna be my first album that I drop. What should the listeners expect from the album? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides that record with J-Dot Breeze, you know what I'm saying, that motherfucker going in the cut, but what else should they expect from that bitch? I expect you feel me to do, to do. I expect it to do numbers. If, if you if, if you really listen to each song, how you supposed to do? Like you listen to a Drake album. If you listen to Drake album, everybody listen to Drake album. Like you listen to that whole with your heart. So you listen to my <laughs> song with your heart. You will really you feel me? See something different. I got a new way. It just ain't it just ain't pop high post pop yet. So when it pop high post pop, it gonna pop. So. That means that, cause I don't think nobody, I don't know nobody who sound like me. I don't know nobody who speak how I speak. I don't know nobody who flow how I flow. That being said, I got my own sound, a new sound. Every rapper got their own sound. I feel like I got my own sound, oh, my own for flow. Sure. Talk about your grind as an independent artist and what would it take for you to sign to a major? I ain't gonna count, I'm gonna keep it real. I really want to sign to no label. Cause I, I I know everything a label know. 
But uh, if I do sign to a label, it'll be because to learn what they do know on the marketing side. You feel me? The money, you feel me? I ain't stressing about no money. I got money. It's about the, the marketing side that I would like to learn about. Because, like, you know, the labels, they got real marketing skills. and They, 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 they know a lot about marketing. But they may say, I, if I sign, I sign, you feel me, like a one or two year contract. But they want to know it's for the marketing, though. It's really for the marketing. If I can learn marketing, I can teach it to them, you feel me, to my managers, and they can have my own label. I got my own label called Beverly Entertainment. No, that's for sure. What would you say is your overall goal and dream for the label? She have about like 10, 10, 10, 10 artists that I know, you feel me, they're going to grind and work the same way I do. Grind and work the same way I do. They're going to put the same effort in to what I do and want to make better for themselves. I got two artists I'm finna sign when I go back in town. They don't even know it yet. That being said, I got a lot, I got a lot going on right now. That's too hard. Besides music, what else you working on right now? I got a, a reality show called Waters World. <laughs> <laughs> want somebody fighting on that bitch today? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, man. I'm doing that now while we speak. <laughs> God, I'm doing the episode now. But uh, I got a, you feel me? What the world show, you feel me? That's like another investment, for real. Another investment, another publicity. You feel me? What I did, I just took my name and just, when your name ringing, you gotta make, you gotta, you gotta do some off for it. You can't just let it sit. So I made a, a website called World of World and just, it was just on me. So that being said, I just made like, you feel me? You really want me? Cause I had two females already. So if you really want me, y'all gonna have to compete for me. So I had 10 females try out. It was more than 10 females. They had a whole bunch. I was gonna choose 10 females out them, you feel me, out that choice. And I was gonna choose like three more to win. You feel me, to come kick with me. And that's just what I did. So I made a reality show out of it. And it, the first, uh, First day I put the old episode out, I made like a 100K in the first day. So I was like, you feel me? If you gonna make some money off your name, make some money off your name. Don't be no fool and just do that shit just off the fame. Really get in and, and get grind with that shit. So that being said, you feel me? I, I did, I'm doing all right. No, for sure. So besides reality TV and music, what else we got coming up? That about it. I just got a film, a reality show, and I'm just I'm pushing with the reality show and um, my music, and I got a uh, tax shop business called JB. What it called? JB Accounting Tax Service. There you go, JB Accounting Tax Service. You feel So we we pushing on that. We we just got too much motion in the city right now. So that being said, we y'all go forward that JB. You need your taxes did. Come holler at me. Tired yeah. shit. We're gonna get you right. <laughs> nah, for the shit show. So, any last words and shout outs? I shout out. First, I'm gonna shout out myself, La Water. Y'all go forward that while Water. <laughs> shout out my boy Jetty, J. Dot Breezy, for coming and give me his time. If forward that, that's all love. Shout out to Lil Pop, forward him. Shout out Sally Sosa, I fuck with her. Shout out my mama, ooh. The real one. The real one, my mama, she is my the biggest the fan. Realest ever. My realest fan, I love her to death. Shout out my mama, I love you. She my daddy, out. shout out my dad, I yeah, love him too. Everybody who fuck me, shout out to him. I love all y'all. No cap. Hello, Walter, we appreciate having you on the porch with us today, gang. Appreciate that, too. appreciate y'all too. No cap. With Lil Wody, bitch, you better pay me what you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> and all the sell it with. Can't nobody say they ran it on me, bitch, I'm right on feet. I'm making plays, just like Odell Bell, come here right on her cheek. Right Get out the way, cheek. if you ain't bringing me no money.